Our story begins with a car traveling. Inside, someone is playing a very intense fighting game. It turns out to be a family, a father, a mother, and their son. The father says, Gilsu, put the phone down. But the son doesn't respond and looks dead tired. Gilsu's mother says, your father is talking to you. You should at least answer him. The father stares out the car window, but the son continues to ignore him, thinking to himself that maybe his father regrets having such a weak and pathetic son like him. Meanwhile, we see scenes of him being bullied at school. The mother ends up saying that if other kids bully him at school, he should just leave. She says she wants him to have the most comfortable life possible. But he thinks she's a liar because she was the first to ask to move after he started being bullied at school. Meanwhile, he also loses in the game and thinks he should just survive on his own. As he approaches the new school, he thinks he just wants to escape from there. Anything could save him now, an earthquake, an invasion from North Korea. Upon entering the classroom, he introduces himself as Lee gil -soo. He says he comes from the capital and has never been to these parts before. He says it's a pleasure to meet everyone, even though he wishes time would stop at that moment and nothing bad would happen to him. But suddenly, he hears applause and is surprised to see the whole class clapping and saying, Nice to meet you, man. This is awesome. All the boys in the room are laughing and saying, Wow, finally someone from Seoul is in our class, huh? The atmosphere is completely different. One guy pats him on the arm and says, Stop being so patriotic. Obviously, Gilsu is completely taken aback by this, and some time passes. At the end of one of the classes, a very big and chubby guy approaches him and says, Hey, kid. He sees two boys looking down at him, and he's obviously surprised, remembering what happened to him before. But when the guy grabs his shoulder, he simply asks if he's still not used to things around here and suggests they go to the convenience store nearby, offering to show him around the school as well. Gil Su, again, is very confused because he's not used to being treated like this. At the convenience store, he thinks it's the first time he's gone to one with someone like a friend. Suddenly, the guy starts joking with his friend and asks, What do you think of this guy's eyebrow? Do you think it's a good enough reason for his girlfriend to break up with him? And Jules, the Joker, says, Ah, I think you've got your charm. And in his head, Gil Su is thinking, Wow, I didn't expect that kind of question. He thinks to himself, what kind of school is this? Everyone seems happy here. He thinks he could also be happy. Without meaning to, he accidentally bumps into someone, spilling grape juice and staining their shirt. Always desperate in such situations, he offers money to clean the clothes, but the guy just says it's fine. He looks back, thanks Gilsu for the offer, and then smiles, thinking it was nice of him. Gilsu realizes that maybe he could have a normal life at this school. Later, at the end of class, while packing his bag, he thinks that the atmosphere at this school is completely different from his old one. Everyone is nice and kind, and it seems like he didn't care about anything. He feels happy to have moved. Suddenly, the same guy who invited him to the convenience store asks if he has plans for the evening. Gilsu says no, and the guy asks if he wants to go somewhere with him. Gilsu says no again, but the guy insists that he has to show him a place. Gilsu ends up agreeing, since it's already night. They walk down a very dark and deserted street. Gilsu thinks they've been walking for a long time and has no idea where they're going. He asks Duel what they're going to do, as they have been walking for a long time. Duel responds, I want to show you a place. Everyone new at school has to go there. Gilsu thinks, what do you mean, and realizes they're getting farther from the city. Duel suddenly stops and asks, have you ever had any experience with boxing or something similar? Gilsu asks, boxing? Uh, no, not really. Then Duel laughs and says, Hey, then you're going to need a Bagoose to be in this place. No kidding, okay? He really said Bagoose. Then he says, Ah, uh, never mind. Uh, let's hurry because we're almost there. Gilsu looks at his arm and notices something he hadn't seen before. He has several scars. Gilsu remembers again what they did to him at the old school and with the bullies. He starts getting very nervous in the middle of the street and begins to apologize, saying he has to go and can come another day. But Duel puts his hand on his shoulder and says, We're almost there. Just come take a look. If you're very busy, I'm sure you won't like it, but I think you'll like it. Gilsu thinks he's been deceived by this guy. He thinks it was all a lie, all the kindness, all the smiles. He starts to defend himself, thinking he's going to be bullied again. But when the doors open, he sees two people fighting frenetically. There are several other boys from the same school cheering like an organized crowd. Suddenly, one of the boys is knocked down with a kick to the face, while the other boys say, I'm next, I'm next. Gilsu can only think, what do you want me to do? Duel says, you must be shocked by this, right? He explains that this is the school's fighting arena and that it's a great privilege that only the students of this school can be here. Despite saying this, the two fighters respect each other. One of them says, yeah, 
you're getting much stronger. And the other responds, yeah, I'm getting heavier. Gilsu thinks, what do you mean by fighting in an arena? Suddenly, a big guy arrives and asks, hey, kid, who's that next to you, Duel? Zhang Xiong, he is the president of Six Gates School. Duel says, ah, he's the new transfer student from my class. And Duel thinks, wow, this guy here looks really scary. The guy with the prominent eyebrows looks at Duel and says, oh, I was waiting for you to get here. I'm going to make you pay for messing with my eyebrow. Duel quickly runs off, saying, oh, I'm going over there. Suddenly, the big guy introduces himself to Duel, saying he is the president of the Six Gates Student Council. He says, welcome to our school. Meanwhile, Gilsu thinks, my god, this guy is huge. In the background, a fight is happening, and people are cheering. Du and Eyebrow Guy are fighting. Gilsu wonders, why are they fighting? I thought they were friends. Jang, standing next to him, shouts, even the heat this year isn't bad, right? Jang turns to Gilsu and says, this is the true face of our school. Jang continues explaining, I don't know if you've noticed, but no one gets bullied at our school. But even without bullying, we have violence. We just confined it to the arena. Jang, with a confident look on his face, says, you must have gone through a lot of crap at your old school, right? Instead of getting stressed here, in a school where everyone is equal and violent. Meanwhile, the jiu-jitsu here is terrible. This place is called the Six Gates Fight Arena. And this place is the Six Gates Arena. Gilsu is still amazed by the fight, wondering how everyone is equal and violent. Jang gets very close to Gilsu and says, I don't like anything complex, so I'll explain it to you, and you won't ask me to repeat it. Rule number one, only Six Gates students can enter here. Entry is not allowed for graduates, dropouts, or expelled student. Rule number two, all fights are hand-to-hand, -hand, yes or no. No third person is allowed, no matter what. Rule number three, a student council member will judge the fights. They also decide when the fight ends. Suddenly, the guy that Gilsu accidentally stained earlier says, Hey, you're here too, kid? Gilsu thinks it's the same guy whose shirt he dirted. Gilsu starts taking off his tie and says, Come on, I'll make you pay for the clothes. Jang says, Wow, you already have an opponent. Go ahead, you'll learn. Gilsu is like, What do you mean, learn? Jang explains the fourth rule. Any kind of violence is prohibited outside the arena, and any grudges you have, you will resolve in the arena. He says this is the most important rule and tells him not to be afraid and just have fun. Gilsu steps into the ring and thinks, what do you mean, enjoy fighting? My daily routine was just getting beaten up. As the referee prepares the fight, Gilsu thinks even more about the guy who looks all pumped up. With clenched fists, he thinks, with my three years of experience as a bullying victim, the fight begins, and he thinks, my instincts are telling me to get out of here. The fight begins, and people are already cheering. One guy says, wow, this guy is really unlucky to end up straight in the ring. The guy thinks, calm, what do you mean? Is this guy famous? I think he's a freshman, right? He realizes that the guy is the brother of someone very cool who joined the school this year. Kong says, hey, newbie, aren't you coming? I was thinking of going easy on you since it's your first day. Gilsu thinks, my god, I'm so scared, my body won't even move. How did I end up in a fight like this out of nowhere? The guy says, if you don't come, I'll come to you. He runs towards Gilsu. In his mind, Gilsu becomes increasingly desperate. But suddenly, there's a loud noise. It leaves everyone stunned. In reality, Gilsu just vomited on Kong, and everyone starts shouting, pause, pause, pause. The guy vomited here, man, for God's sake, he vomited on him. Gilsu thought to himself, what do you mean? Can I, a guy who's been bullied my whole life, do this? The next day at school, people were talking about it. Man, yesterday in the arena was crazy, right? You should have seen it. Hugo, he didn't transfer and vomit on Kong. Meanwhile, Gilsu was sitting in the bathroom thinking, wow, I'm so screwed, I'm so screwed. He realized, this is a normal school, what do you mean? He remembered the principal saying, don't be afraid, just have fun. And he thought, forget about having fun, I won't even be able to punch anyone. What happened yesterday will probably happen again today. But then he thought to himself, if there's no violence at school, just don't go to the arena. Meanwhile, Yu was doing a lot of push-ups with both feet. When Gilsu arrived, he was completing his thousandth one. And the guys were like, I was wrong, actually he's not the school principal, he's the student council president. Gilsu and I thought at the same time, how is this guy a student, man? Suddenly, Yung stands up and says, hey, newbie, do you have something to say to me? Embarrassed, Gilsu says, yes, I have something to ask you about the arena. Yung says, oh, you've developed another skill besides vomiting. The other kids start saying, hey, hungry boy, 
everyone was becoming a fan of him because he vomited. And Gilsu says, no, it's not that. Actually, I want to say that I won't be going to the arena any. Chan says, what do you mean? Why? You didn't get hurt last time. Gilsu says, in fact, I don't trust myself to fight with anyone. I don't want to hurt anyone, and I don't want to be hurt either because I don't know how to do that. He added that he doesn't understand everything. But suddenly, Jung just puts his hand on his face, and with a big smile, he says, So, does that mean I can beat you up as much as I want now? Then he steps out and says, I, Jung Sung, have an announcement to make. From now on, the student Gilsu no longer has the protection of the arena. At first, Gilsu is shocked. Later, during the break between classes, he thinks, What do you mean, protection of the arena? Suddenly, students from other rooms come in and say, So this is the transfer student who doesn't want to fight in the arena anymore. The guy grabs Gilsu with all his strength and slams his head into the table, saying, Then I'll teach you a lesson. Actually, needed a slave and now you're going to be mine. He realizes that no one around is doing anything while he's being beaten. While he's already down on the floor, the guy says, I think he came here because he was bullied at his old school. And the other guy says, Am. I knew at the moment I started getting hit. Every time there's a break, you come to my class. Meanwhile, Gilsu thinks, Ah, so this is the protection of the arena. If you don't participate, you end up being bullied in school. As he continues to be stomped on by the other students, he realizes his hell has begun again. Meanwhile, in the principal's office, he says he wants to leave the school. The principal responds, Wow, but it's only been a week at the school. Gilsu says, Yes, I'm already prepared for the national exam, and that's more important to me. The principal then says, All right, if there's nothing else I can help you with, I guess I'll support your decision. I'm sorry, Mom and Dad, for having such a dishonorable son, he thinks as he leaves the school at sunset. Another horrible school cycle is over, and starting tomorrow, I'll have a normal life. But suddenly, Chong interrupts him and says, Why aren't you fighting? Gilsu asks, What's the problem? And thinks that someone addicted to fighting can't understand what he's feeling now. He explains that he has a trauma from a lot of violence because he suffered terrible bullying at his old school. He says he's reached his limit and just wants to give up. But suddenly, Jung approaches him and says, You're more pathetic than I thought. Gilsu is surprised by this, right? Jung continues, Who said you need to fight like a professional? Skill? Who needs that crap? He adds, If you don't have teeth, bite with your gums. If you don't have strength, use your stomach. That's what fighting is. Gilsu doesn't understand, right? The president grabs him by the collar and says, But now you don't even want to protect yourself. Gilsu thinks, Why is he doing this? What did I do wrong? The principal says, Wait, do you think this world is a garden full of butterflies? If you don't fight, you'll be a loser for the rest of your life. After he leaves, Gilsu starts reflecting on this. He doesn't know what to do now. Suddenly, he is stopped by Kong, who says, Oh, I heard you're not coming to school tomorrow. He asks, How are you going to leave without even telling us? Kong says, If I leave, who will be my punching bag? Since the arena started, I've never had a slave. He continues, Do you think everything will end when you leave the school? And tells him to follow him now. Obviously, they take him to the place and start beating him again. In that moment, Gilsu thinks he's going to die, but suddenly Kong says, You should be grateful for this, Gilsu, because if my older brother were still at six gates, you would have died for sure. Kong suddenly takes out his phone and asks one of his friends, Is the address you sent me correct? While Gilsu wonders, What do you mean, address? The other guy says, Of course it's correct. Kong says, Now I know where Gilsu lives. He recites Gilsu's full address. Gilsu is completely terrified. Kong says, Let's see what happens the next time you don't participate in the arena. He gets up and asks, What do you mean? What are you doing? What are you planning to do with my address? He asks. Kong says, Shut up. He grabs Gilsu's face, takes a photo, and threatens to send it to everyone. Gilsu is terrified and thinks, Why are you doing this to me? What did I do wrong? He thought everything was going to end, that his hell of pain was over, and that he had finally escaped it. But he was pulled back in again. He can't escape this hell. He remembers the principal saying, Who said you need to fight like a professional? Skill? No one needs that crap. Fight with what you have. You don't even think about protecting yourself. Suddenly, while they're beating him, he screams, and Kong says, This is so much fun. Now he's screaming. Gilsu begins to think, Why? Why me? As Kang's phone goes flying, Gilsu wonders, What did I do wrong? Kong says, I told you he was stubborn. Now he's making a fool of himself. While Kong held his face, Gilsu thought, if I don't have teeth, I'll use my gums. Suddenly, Kong screams in pain. Gilsu had bitten his hand. As he bites until it bleeds, he says, if I don't have strength, 
I'll use my teeth. Kong punches him, and he falls. Both Kong and another guy ask him, Do you want to die? Kong thinks, Are you crazy? That hurt like hell. Gilsu gets up and asks, Did it hurt or not? Kong doesn't understand. Gilsu rises like an animal, saying, If I'm going to die, I'll take you with me. Kong thinks, Look at that. Now he's fighting back. Even a rat bites back, doesn't it? He asks, Are you ready? The other guys come after Gilsu as well. He comes back to life, punching the faces of these idiots. He remembers the principal and asks, What do you mean? You don't need to fight like a professional. He thinks, I don't need to look cool while fighting. I just need to do what I can. Kwong orders someone to grab him. Gilsu kicks and thinks, Are you crazy? Why did I suddenly counterattack these guys? Meanwhile, in the arena, the doors open. The principal looks on as Dil Su says he's going to try again. With all the determination he has, he says he's going to enter the arena. Meanwhile, the guys are still chasing. The principal laughs and says, This is much more interesting than I thought it would be. This time, it's a rematch. Kong versus Dil Su in the arena again. The tattoo guy says, Ah, I should be the one beating up this nerd, not Kong. This guy is the second in command in Kang's game. His name is Park Yango. Another guy tells Yango, Dude, lower your voice, we're not alone. Yango replies, I know, looking at the principal. Yango says, We always have to be cautious with the principal. Meanwhile, Gilsu takes a punch to the face and a knee to the stomach. As Khan beats him, he says, Did you think you could do something against me in a one-on-one? -on -one? He knocks Gilsu down with a big punch again. He says, Seriously, this is so pathetic, and delivers a hard kick to Gilsu's chin. He grabs Gilsu by the collar and asks, Do you regret it now? Gilsu gives him a deadly look, and Khan thinks, You bastard, stop looking at me like that, and slaps Gilsu's face. He says, What do you mean, trying to resist? You're a loser you need to stay in your place. Again, he tries to kick Gilsu in the face, which knocks him down, sending him rolling across the arena. Meanwhile, the guys are thinking, oh my god, is this guy still alive? Khan wonders, wow, did I go too far? Is this guy actually dead? But Gilsu gets up, leaving everyone in shock. Khan thinks, what do you mean? This guy should have been knocked out by that kick. Then Khan thinks, stop pushing yourself, if you really keep going like this. Gilsu says, kill me? With a demonic look, he says, is that all you got? He grabs Kong and thinks, this is nothing compared to everything I've suffered. He throws Kong down with everything he's got in the arena. The crowd says, yeah, he has some good moves, right? And another guy thinks, that burst of anger was really good. Kong wonders, where did he get this strength? He caught me off guard. Meanwhile, Gilsu prepares to punch Kong. But Kong revives and says, where do you think you're going with those slow punches? Gilsu thinks again, if you don't have strength, you have to use your willpower. He headbutts Kong. Kang's nose starts bleeding a lot. While the principal just watches, the guys in the background say, Yeah, this guy must have good moves. He's much funnier than I thought. The principal thinks to himself that even during the adrenaline, Gilsu continues to feel pain, and it must hurt a lot to do this. He thinks Gilsu really has a lot of determination. Kong pushes Gilsu off him and stands up, asking, Do you have any last wishes before you die? Gilsu, looking like a zombie, stands up very angry. He thinks, is this all they have to offer? This gang I was afraid of? Is this all they have to show in the arena? As he faces Kong, everyone cheers for Gilsu. He runs towards Kong. As he prepares the punch, he says, why was I afraid of these guys all this time? But he ends up taking a hook. Kong says, sorry, but I can't let my guard down again. Gilsu is knocked out, and the referee announces that Kong has won the battle. Later, in the arena, Gilsu slowly opens his eyes and wonders where he is. He asks, was I knocked out? He says, even so, I managed to fight him. He admits, I never thought I would win, but I used all my strength to hit that bastard. I did everything I could. He thinks that in future fights, he should take it slower and not rush like he did. He considers that maybe Kang's weakness is being caught off guard, as it happened at the beginning of the fight. He thinks that if he were just a little bit stronger. Suddenly, he sees the principal standing over him. He asks, Tom, let's clear things up now. He looks around and realizes there's no one else there. He asks, did you stay here because of me? The principal replies, my duty as the principal is to look after the students who participate in the arena. This is not a place for anyone to die. In fact, it's a place to protect the student. The principal adds, you know it's just for today, right? Because starting tomorrow, when you leave the school, you won't be able to stay here anymore. Well, be careful out there. As Gilsu is leaving, he asks, what do I need to do? The principal turns around. What do you mean? Gilsu says, I'm not leaving the school anymore. Please, tell me what to do. I want to get stronger too. 
The principal gives a big smile and says, training the weak is also the duty of the student council president. While Gilsu is stunned, the principal asks, are you ready? And immediately punches him in the stomach. As Gilsu writhes on the ground in pain, screaming, the principal asks, how do you feel? Do you feel like you're going to die? He adds, this is just the beginning. I'm going to teach you how to endure this. The next day at school, Gilsu is feeling intense pain in his ribs and thinks, wow, what kind of punch did the principal give me? I feel like something's broken. He recalls the principal telling him, come to me during your breaks and you'll get stronger if you keep doing this. He wonders, is that all? To become stronger? Someone calls out to him and when he turns around, he sees it's Doyle who says, ah, I thought you were leaving the school. Gilsu replies, ah, I changed my mind. Doyle says, ah, I knew you would like the arena. Then Doyle kind of greets him and says, I knew you had the guts for this. Suddenly, someone else calls him while he's climbing the stairs, and it's Hang and his small group. Hung says, ah, the punching bag is back? Gilsu thinks, he's strong. Hung says, I didn't expect you to come back. You're looking for revenge, right? But you should stay in your place, and you can bet I'll kill you next. As they walk away, DUI just looks at them with a strange expression. When he looks to the side to see Gilsu's reaction, he gets very upset. Gilsu is thinking, I'm going to get stronger so I never lose to these bastards again. Later, when classes end, we see Gilsu taking a punch to the face, then another to the stomach, and we see who's hitting him, it's the principal. The principal says, keep your eyes open, don't be afraid, look straight at my fist. He adds, you're not ready to fight until our training is complete. As he takes the punch, Gilsu thinks, what the hell kind of training is this? While taking another punch to the face, he thinks that he's been training like this for days. After several punches, the principal knocks him down with a kick. Lying all messed up on the ground, Gilsu thinks it was just another beating. Later in the arena, Hung wins another fight. We were talking about Hung, but it's King, sorry, sorry, sorry. On the way back, King wins another fight, and his opponent is all messed up on the ground. There are two guys talking in the crowd, and one of them says, yeah, ever since he faced the jiu-jitsu guy, he hasn't shown mercy to anyone. The other replies, yeah, I think his ego got hurt. Suddenly, Kong approaches them and says, if you're so confident, why don't you face me? Kong continues beating everyone like that, getting really angry and thinking these guys are all idiots. He goes back to his group and asks, have you seen jiu-jitsu around? They say they haven't seen him since the last breaks. One of them mentions he's avoiding the arena. When Kong thinks about it, he remembers the principal said that jiu-jitsu is no longer protected by the arena. He laughs and tells his group he has an idea, an idea to deal with the loser. Meanwhile, while running the marathon, he wonders if he'll really get stronger with this training method. Determined, he says to himself that he'll give it his all and keeps running hard. He knows he needs to get much stronger, much faster. Suddenly, a motorcycle comes speeding towards him and hits his arm. More motorcycles follow. As the others approach, one guy asks, Hey, did you take my bike? As he gets off the bike, he says, Excuse me, I think we need to have a discussion to resolve this. Five million to pay. Gilsu replies, How do you think Baramato got that money? And it was you who hit me. The guy grabs his head and says, What did you just say, you loser? And punches Gilsu in the face. As he tries to get up from the ground, the others laugh at him. While getting up, he starts reflecting again. The guy asks, Hey man, are you deaf? Aren't you going to answer me? Gilsu realizes he's not afraid this time. The guy says, Do you think I'm just asking for the five million? I'm making you pay now, and you'll have to pay me again later. Gilsu realizes he's not afraid because, during all this training, all this time, he's been beaten by a monster like the prince. Suddenly, he removes his hand from his face, revealing a big bruise, and shouts, Why should I give money to someone like you? He says, I'm not afraid anymore. The guy grabs his hand and says, was that supposed to be a punch? Gilsu thinks, what do you mean? My punch didn't work at all? He starts punching frantically, thinking, what do I do now? He admits he's never learned how to punch someone, only how to take a beating. The guy then kicks him in the face. The others grab him and say, do you think you're in a pool, swimming around and flailing your arms like that? Another guy pulls out his brass knuckle and says, you're an idiot. You can't do this to me again because I can't do this to you. The guy says, after he recovers from this, he'll realize he was in the wrong place. As he's preparing to punch Gilsu, he says, okay, clench your teeth. Just as Gilsu is about to take the punch, someone jumps down towards him. He looks up, thinking, what is this, and then takes a knee to the face. Blood pours from Gilsu's nose, and the others are like, what's that? He says, get him too. And then we see it's Duel who came to help Gilsu. He smiles at Gilsu and says, ah, so it was you. 
One of the guys rushes at him and asks, where did you come from? But Duel swiftly dodges the punch and hits the guy back. Another guy comes at Duel with a stick, but Duel also takes him down, knocking out one of his teeth. The girl who was with him is in shock and, instead of running, goes to the guy on the ground and says, Ah, you idiot, get up, are you going to leave me here alone? Meanwhile, Justice is thinking, Wow, Gilsu is really strong. He looks at Gilsu and thinks, I thought he was just a normal guy, since when is he this strong? Then Dona de Minas IA steps in, asking, Do you know who we are? She says, We are the strongest in the first year at Jin Sang School, and if we tell our superiors, you're screwed. The guy with the brass knuckles says, screw this. He adds, bring those guys here. It won't do you any good. Look at their clothes. They're from Six Gate. I thought that weird guy wasn't from any school. I shouldn't have messed with anyone from Six Gate. I shouldn't have even touched him. After that, they grab their bikes and take off. One guy just says, huh, idiot. Duel asks Gilsu, how did you end up getting involved with these guys? Gilsu explains that he's receiving special training from the principal. Duel says, wow, you're really taking this arena thing seriously, huh? Gilsu replies, Yes, I'm still a bit weak, but I managed to take some punches from those idiots. Duel says, Yes, I saw you raising your hands. Gilsu thinks, Yes, I'm so embarrassed. Meanwhile, in Kang's gang, one of the guys asks, How did you figure out a way to deal with that idiot? Another asks, Are you going to make fun of something in the arena? Kong thinks, No, he shot himself in the foot. He was the first guy in school to openly say he wouldn't fight in the arena any When you don't fight in the arena, you lose the protection of the arena. In other words, violence is no longer prohibited outside the arena. He says that even in the arena, there are some idiots who go there just to watch and never fight. One of the guys says, yes, seriously, some guys never get into fights, and the other says they just use these rules to stay comfortable at school. But Kong says, yes, but the idiot Gilsu openly said he wouldn't fight in the arena anymore. And you know what happens when you challenge one of them outside the arena? One of the guys says, if we challenge one of those idiots, they'll have to fight because they don't want to end up like Gilsu. Kong says, arena is now our playground. When he returns to the arena, the first person to speak to him is the principal, who looks very intimidating. Kong asks, what do you mean? Why are you here? I don't think I broke any rules. The principal walks past him, saying, you better not keep being this bad. Kong says, I'm sorry for causing this commotion. I'll be more careful next time, principal. The next morning, Gilsu is taking a heavy beating from the principal during training. He's thinking that at this rate, he's going to die. But suddenly, he manages to block one of the principal's punches and is even stunned by it. He thinks, I have to progress, I'm not afraid anymore. The principal says, yes, it looks like you're getting used to the punches, huh? Gilsu tries to counterattack, but the principal dodges. He thinks, if I want to win a fight, I have to hit. He starts punching in a cartoonish way like he did before, but obviously, he's getting it all wrong. The principal punches him and says, Shut up. Stop making those sounds when you punch. It sounds weird. Gilsu, writhing on the ground, thinks, Wow, he hit me harder this time. The principal says, This is called a 1-2. to two. If you master the 1-2, to two, you can win any fight. He takes Gilsu to an old arcade club and asks, Why are we here? This place is super old. When he opens the door, he sees a bald man, but it's actually just a punching machine. The principal starts explaining the technique, saying you have to keep your fists at chin level and lock your jaw. He tells Gilsu to place one foot shoulder width apart and move it slightly. He says to punch with the front hand slowly, and with the second punch, he hits the face of the dummy with a powerful blow. Gilsu thinks, my god, that looked like a bullet. He then thinks, okay, now it's my turn. He throws the first punch and thinks he has to put his weight into the second punch. He manages to hit the dummy. He thinks, okay, I get it, but he only scores a single point. The principal says, these weak punches won't get you anywhere, and hits the dummy again. He explains that the machine broke a long time ago and only counts punches by impact, not by the number of hits. He tells Gilsu he has to punch hard for the machine to register his hit, and that's how he'll learn to really hit the enemy. The principal says, you have to find your own form, but don't come in front of me until you reach this score, showing 99,999 points. Meanwhile, Eyebrow is walking down the hall, talking to his girl, and says, Damn, she's acting like this again. What did I do wrong? Suddenly, he bumps into someone. It's Yondo from Kang's gang, and he knocks Eyebrow down. His phone falls and breaks. Yondo says, Oh, sorry, I bumped into you by accident. Eyebrow accuses, You did that on purpose. Yondo says, No, of course not. What's that look on your face? Then Yondo adds, If you have a problem with me, let's settle it in the arena. No, it was my fault. 
Yango warns, be careful next. Duel helps his friend up and says, that idiot did it on purpose. Duel's going to talk to the council. His friend says, no, no, leave it. It's not worth it. Duel looks at the class with a serious face. Meanwhile, in the cafeteria at lunchtime, Gilsu is eating a large plate very quickly. He says he's been punching that machine until lunchtime, and no matter how much he eats, he's still hungry. He thinks he's punched the machine over 100 times, and the score remains the same. He's reflecting on how strong his punch needs to be. Suddenly, Yondo dumps his entire tray on Gilsu's head and says, Careful there. Oh, sorry. While Gilsu continues eating as if nothing happened, Yong Ho says, Oh, I didn't see you there. Sorry, it was an accident. He starts patting Gilsu's shoulder repeatedly, pretending to be friendly but clearly isn't. He adds, It's good to see you after so long. Danny asks, Are you okay, Gilsu? Earlier, the group was gathered, and one of the guys said, Ha, huh, screw it. Oh my god, that was so funny. Yong Gu bumped into the guy and then apologized for Kong then says, Now we have to do this to Gilsu. We need to force him to challenge one of us in the arena. So he knows what happens when he messes with us. Yong Gu says, You don't need to bother with this insect. Leave it to me. But at that moment, Gilsu grabs Yong Gu's hand. Yong Gu says, So now you've learned to resist, huh? You look so cute when you're angry. Gilsu thinks, What do I do now? He remembers the principal saying he would ban him from the arena until the end. He believes the principal forbade him from doing this, but he wants to while gripping Yong Gu's wrist tightly. At that moment, Duel throws his tray and says, I'm eating, shut up. The tray hits Yong Gu squarely in the face. Then Duel says, Didn't they tell you not to bother a dog while it's eating? Everyone is shocked, including Gil Su. Duel adds, You should know your limits here, idiot. 